Hello everybody, my name's Atley, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my SnowRunner hard mode playthrough. Uh, we're going to start this episode with a little bit of a spending splurge. We are going to bring in a truck. I think it's a good choice. I don't know if it's a good choice because I've not really driven it. I recovered the step pike as part of my sort of first look, phase eight, special expedition. But I've not done anything with it. So I am going to bring it to Yukon. I'm going to buy a semi sideboard trailer for it with a low saddle, five slots of cargo. And I'm just going to see how it performs. And if it doesn't perform as well as I hope, then I'll just do something else. But so it's a little bit of a splurge to bring it here and buy a trailer. I, in the Yukon, I mostly used six slots of Tatra Force plus a four slot trailer. So six slots of cargo. Sometimes the blue trailers are more maneuverable. But mostly I just want to try this truck out. And I think I need a low saddle truck here anyway for another mission. I've got solid choices for low saddle trucks. Tega, Voron Grad, Tatra Phoenix, etc. I've got other trucks. But I've recovered this step pike and I just want to see how it drives, really. So I am deploying it here from the Belozeros Glades. And we will just see how it goes. So customize, let's just double check what I've done with it. It's got the biggest engine. I'll sell one of those. I'm not going to sell that one because you know, not, not always the biggest engine is the best. We'll see. It's already got an off-road gearbox in it. So fine tune, I'm told, has more high and low. So that fine tune gearbox might be interesting to me. I, in, I recovered a fine-tuned gearbox in Wisconsin in a previous episode. There's another one out there somewhere. So we'll start looking for some upgrades as well as we're driving around. But we've got, at the moment, we've got an off-road gearbox which is not bad. I've already bought the race suspension for it, or it had it when I got it, I don't remember. I've got MHS 2s on it, I think. Yes. Which are the best of the mud options that I've got. It doesn't get, it's strange to me, it doesn't get the new MUDs available. Although looking at the numbers in the spreadsheet, those aren't great anyway. I did put an advanced medium. I must have either bought that or taken it off another truck. So we'll see about that. Spare wheel is fitted and the tall snorkel, which is a strange one. I wish I could pan the camera around. Maybe you can see it better from the spare wheel. No, the snorkel is that tube going up the side of the, of the truck behind the cab next to the spare wheel and then the snorkel is up high it's quite strange but it does interfere with some add-ons there's a strange place for them to put the snorkel but maybe it's just realistic against real world uh yeah it's that you got a choice of having it on the bonnet or up behind the cab which is an interesting choice frame add-ons currently equipped with what i want basically which is trunk supplies i need to put some fuel in there low saddle and a loading crane and for now i'm not going to bring the force through because i used it exclusively pretty much in yukon and i just fancy a change you probably do as well uh it looks like i've already done bumpers and paint jobs and things so i think we'll just leave it there and go get driving dark unfortunately but we'll also buy a all nice white lights we'll buy a blue sideboard bed trailer for it which I'm sure will just come in handy generally for this map so trailers let's just pan the camera around and see a little bit don't want the flat bed because things can fall off it I think yeah that one the standard big blue trailer is my default go to so this is a 6800 I've I've checked on Map Runner unless a Map Runner isn't always 100% accurate, but it doesn't look like they give you any trailers, cargo trailers on this map. I'll probably end up buying the ramped flatbed as well at some point, so I do have a six slot option if I bring through either the Azov or the Force. But for now, that will be my five slot cargo option. Let's just check how many repair points I've got in there in case I want to go down. So I've got a spare wheel and I've got 150 points. And I am fully repaired. Yeah, I don't think I did anything with this truck once I'd recovered it in Glades. So we'll chuck some fuel in. 
wrong button. We'll grab some fuel out of there into the pike. Doesn't have a massive fuel tank at 250 liters, but it does have that 80 liter roof. So yeah, 330 doesn't feel bad. I think that's the same as a Taker. And then what we're going to do is go and get these two metal frames. So there's one each from these two buildings. Uh, my route of choice for that, I think. We'll just go off piece, shall we? Let's come along to here. We'll come in and tag this trailer activity. And then it looks to me like I can muscle my way down through. I don't think you know, none of this is roads or trails. It, I think it's washout, but, th but it'll be a good test of the vehicle. And I'm pretty sure this should be navigable. And if it's not, then on the way back with cargo, I'll just go the long way around the road. See how that goes. Experience the pike. It's quite a, quite a good sounding engine. I like the sort of fairly robust clicking of the gearbox as it shifts gears. It's quite, it sounds quite good. Seems quite fast. So we're going to leave the road here and start seeing how this thing behaves off road. It took that a little bit wider than I should have done, but. It's always on all wheel drive, always on dip lock. So it's, it's kind of a bit like the Tega in a lot of ways. I'm just going to see how it compares. It's also a fairly robust logging truck, I think, for long logs. Let's see how it does with that. It's, although it's a 6x6, six six, it's one of the, it's, I think it's only the third truck that can take the long log add on plus the crane. So we might try it for a bit of logging as well. Uh, $7,900, the trailer in the river. My loaded trailer got washed off into the river during a recent flood, but yesterday I saw it on a sandbank. Could I get it out? I'll do my best, mate. No guarantees. See, we're going off-road properly now. We'll see how this trailer and truck forms. Very steep descent, drop it into low high. I've done loads of miles in the Tega in this configuration, crane plus this trailer. Uh, I've done lots of miles in the Grad, a bit less than the Tega, but the Voron Grad was another obvious choice to bring through for a very capable truck. But this is the newest of the default non-DLC. Not not counting the maps as DLCs. I'm slightly interested in trying the Wolf Pack now that they've added AWD and Diff Lock to at least one of them. I am slightly interested in trying that truck out, but I'd have to buy it in the store. I have bought the DLC. I relented. When they decided to add all-wheel drive and diff lock, I thought I'll reward them with a couple of quid. Because I think it was the right decision. So this looks like kind of logging trails rather than purely washout. So it is trails. Let's see how navigable it is. Also see how far we are from that trailer that the guy wants. Let's turn that off and have a look. So we're not far from where from his trailer. I might nip down and do that in the pike, but at the minute my focus needs to be roads. I've done most of the scouting in this region now. 
there's one watchtower on this map that I wasn't able to get to because I need to fix a bridge. So now we're into bridges and road repair mode. got these fuel barrels to recover but for the same reason I'm focusing on roads so I'll leave those for now Is this looks like there is a trail that goes past it get this one first and get the other one on the way out the game plan two metal beams from here will fix north road and then once the north bridge is fixed i can use that to run rolls around and fix the south bridge i'm not a fan of this blue crane one of the reasons that i like the force so much is it's got a big crane on it much more capable oh hang on no 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 no, I didn't put the legs down. Store the crane. That's tipped me right over. And then I'm now, what, moonwalking? What am I doing now? What's happening with that then? Engine off, not attached to anything. What is that doing? It is a step. Is it stepping? What's it doing? Oh, I tipped, tipped over. Right. Choices. Choices. I don't know if I've got... I left the Pacific here the, at the end of the last episode. 30% of a tank enough to get me here. It is, isn't it? Let's try that. Oh, tipped over while I was doing crane work. So let's just, I haven't got fuel to waste, so let's make sure I know the route that I need to take, which is going to be down to here, around here, across this, across this, across here, and into help. And then the pike will have enough fuel to get the pair of us out. I didn't put the legs down on the crane. And then out the corner of my eye, while I was focusing on the cargo, I noticed this truck starting to tip but it was too late to stop it don't know what that physics thing was all about though that was a bit strange so i've got no all-wheel drive or diff lock on this yet i'm not being too complacent with it but it does seem like it drives quite nicely i was going to leave the pacific until i'd fixed northbridge and have a better chance of getting fuel to it but needs must. My well, Zix and Ford are still in um, Black Badger Lake. But I want to fix the bridges here as a priority. So I'll worry about those two trucks later. Hang on. I haven't got... I haven't been to the garage yet. So I haven't got low... I haven't got an off-road gearbox yet. And no diff lock. These tyres don't seem to be too bad, but... Alright, I'm just going to make sure I know the correct departure point. So there's a rocky ledge that I used in the Ford last episode to cross this river.
Yeah, I'm kind of floating, aren't I? Too far away from any winch points. I may have got a second truck in trouble here. Oh, uh, what are you playing at, at hey. The truck is floating, basically. Got fuel for this. Didn't really want to bring the Zix through, to be honest. I wanted to use it to recover that White Western Star. No, oh, let's bring the Zix through. It's quicker. Got to get some progress done. I'll either come back or do something else for that White Western Star. I don't want to get sidetracked by doing that now. I want to focus on my roads and bridges. Not going well so far? Well, it's snow runner, right? So this is, this is kind of normal. But I've been a bit thrown by that pike falling over, but it's my fault for not putting its legs down. And then I should have known that the Pacific would struggle to get back to the garage through that route on its own because I know it doesn't have a diff lock yet. Not sure what its tyre options are because I haven't got it in a garage and I haven't looked at it yet. I mean, I had a comment that made me chuckle a bit when I read it this morning. That if you fancy a challenge, sure, go ahead, try using the Pacific. Which did make me chuckle a little bit. I'm assuming it's just going to be a bit underpowered for what I'm going to ask of it. Uh, make sure I don't zig when I should zag. This rocky stuff, dry, dry terrain with rocks on the road, is probably the worst thing for this six. Except maybe sheet ice. But there won't be any of that in this region. Yeah, this rocky stuff in the road doesn't make for comfortable Zix driving. Right, here we go. Greenwoods River. Is that Scout 800 they got on that splash screen? Don't think I'll get one of those on this map. So I'm recording this one on Saturday morning and as I've said in the previous episode and now in a post just to confirm it I'm, I'm not going to be publishing a video on the Saturday and you'll know that this, so this is going to be the Monday video basically I wouldn't have time to record edit and upload a video on Saturday morning for Saturday afternoon anyway uh, but yeah, yesterday I haven't really explained. I haven't really said why. Have I? I was it was a bit weird when I was editing it. I thought I was being a bit cryptic. But uh, this year I became a granddad, and yesterday I spent all day with my wife looking after our grandson doing childcare because his mum's returned to work, and I am absolutely shattered looking at. Uh, uh, looking after a wriggly 10 month old baby boy is quite a tiring experience but yeah every Friday or pretty much every Friday we'll be doing childcare for my grandson so that's why I have that's why this week there's no video on a Saturday because I wasn't prepared enough to do that must be further around this corner but when I edited it I, I don't I, I haven't really spoken much about real life stuff have I and I, therefore when I was saying I'm not doing one on Saturday 
so that's that's probably the biggest reason is that my Fridays are no longer uh, a non-working day because I'm now working with my grandson and it's wonderful love it really had a fantastic day with him yesterday but it's very tiring and it's obviously Fridays used to be a more or less editing and recording day and they can't be anymore because of that which is which is a good thing but it's yeah changing but the other reason really is that the way I do the way I edit SnowRunner videos takes longer than it ought to probably it's fair to say and four videos a week of SnowRunner is but the way I do them, quite difficult for me to sustain. So Saturdays are going to become another game. I haven't entirely decided what. At the moment, I've recorded probably over a dozen episode one attempts at other games. And then I'm not yet decided on which one I like well enough to put on the... On the channel games I like playing but not necessarily let's just turn that engine on give me a bit of help for what it's worth so yeah there's there's a uh, like re art, real life change in terms of I'm now a grandfather and I've got childcare to do on Fridays which does take up a bit of time that was used for editing before uh, plus my style of doing snow runner which I don't want to change but I have to acknowledge is quite time consuming the way that I do the time lapses with the narrative over the top of them takes ages and I'm not changing that because I like them I like the way I do this but for another game I would be doing a little bit more I'm trying to pick a game where cutting out some of the what I perceive to be boring bits would work for the game so hopefully that made sense that rambling little bit but I'm a granddad now and I'm doing childcare and it's wonderful plus four episodes a week has become unsustainable even without that Friday commitment So therefore, I am cutting SnowRunner down to three a week. But I still think that's a, that's a decent amount of content for a game as time-consuming as this one. Uh, there, that crossover, I think it is. I think it's left. I think I can cross here. Probably went a little bit off the line I wanted to then while I was talking, but it works. I'm back. And this is the steel place. Let's shut this Pacific's engine off. Drop a tow rope. Get the pike back on its wheels and get back on track. Very sandy ground, isn't it? Yeah, I know there's a big sand quarry on the other map. And a sand pit here. I don't know whether that's a like if that's what you, uh, Wisconsin is known for, whether it's a sandy limestoney sort of terrain and therefore big producer of America's sand. I don't know. Engine all change. Get back on track and get this loaded. Get on with our job. Worry about the Pacific and the Zix later. Train. This time put the legs down. 
know if that would have actually stopped it, but couldn't have hurt, could it? Turn my camera around. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of stability as a crane truck, even with that leg down. Is it that sandy ground that's doing this? Is that what's happening here? Is it because the leg can't make purchase in the sandy ground? Let's see if I can be cheeky. I think last time, if I hadn't have put the crane away, it wouldn't have tipped right over. Yeah, I think the leg, the crane legs are just not really getting purchase. Restore the crane. I'm going to try moving. This is not working out, is it? Not a very stable crane platform. But the terrain physics may just be a thing I need to learn, is that this sandy stuff is not great for stability of cranes. Crane, legs. Is it managing to get both legs down? Yes. Yeah, this truck's wobbling all over the place. It might just not be big enough. That'll pack. Store the crane. Reattach. Then we'll get the other one. I may try and load the other one. Without disconnecting from the trailer. Because the trailer will give me a little bit of extra stability. Attach the trailer. Don't need to pack for a minute. loading platform and manoeuvre myself to load but it's it's ended up on that sandy stuff I'm just not sure that I'll have much stability but let's try it legs down I mean in the real world even on that sandy stuff you'd be putting big old chunks of wood underneath your legs and it would give you more stability than just putting that little round foot into the soil there we go still the crane back the cargo done get back to where we should have been 20 minutes ago. I'm not convinced with the pike at the moment in terms of stability. And again, certain trucks that have the jeweler rear tyre options do gain more stability than these MHS, but that wasn't an option for this truck. I'm not, I have got room for one more cargo, but I'm not going to get distracted by that fuel at the moment. But let's just turn my engine off. Have a look at the map. I think I might just take this up and then come around the road route. I'm 
most direct route back to stable asphalt. There yeah, it climbs up here in high. Got the biggest engine in. Put it in high. It's got a fairly heavy cargo loaded up. The power to weight looks pretty good on it at the moment. It's not bad, is it? If it's climbing up there in high with this cargo on. There we go. That's as high as it could go in high range. Now in low high. It's not inspiring me with stability confidence, I want to say. <laughs> and I think that would apply even more so for logging because I find logging trailers to be less stable than this blue trailer. to whack a logging crane on top of it with a long log trailer and I think it might struggle for stability I'm not giving up on it, this is just first impressions right, I'm I'm going to keep going because there's a little bit of learn to drive, every truck has its different different things you can expect it to do I've been used to things like the Tager the Tager would have just stormed out of there and probably wouldn't have tipped over while it was craning stuff up either. Trust that I'll put the waypoint in the right place to get around to the road. The truck I'd love to try for this type of terrain is the Tager B. But it's so much work to get it. I'm just going to wait until I get to main properly, I'm pretty sure. Lights on. And then now we're on an asphalt run all the way to the bridge that we need to fix. I haven't touched the reserves in the roof yet. When we get to the delivery point, we'll have a look at how much fuel we've used on that 250 litre tank. This is going to end up being a road that we drive quite a lot. I think. Oh, that was a wide turn. Not quite a wide turning circle. Just left that one a bit late. Make sure I know where I gotta deliver this. Yeah, I'm tracking the wrong thing. Doesn't help. I knew where I was going, I just couldn't understand why the delivery point was in there. But it's the bridge I want to come to. I think I've got to go in there and get service spare parts as the second part of this. Cargo management, two beams. First cutscene of the bridge. It's got a deep ravine underneath that, isn't it? You're not rescuing anything that falls in there, I don't think. And then it wanted two service spare parts. Got a handbrake off, we've got to turn around, go back. Because that railway depot we were just past. This is a fun place to turn around, isn't it? In a truck you don't trust the stability of.
the trade-off with the other trailer though this big blue trailer is at least reasonable to reverse whereas the four slot dollies are a nightmare to reverse so you get one slot of extra cargo with a dolly and a suitable holy trinity trap but this is more maneuverable so we're coming in here for service spare parts we may chuck some metal rolls in as well I think you can get metal rolls here turn it around before I load it get the angle right, I can see my wheels a little bit of camera jankiness so, detach that trailer cargo, service spare parts unlimited supply metal rolls 15, and that's all that's in here so we want two service spare parts and I'm going to probably be cheeky and take four metal rolls see if I can get away with that I wonder if this map, maybe this is a map where a eight slot trailer wouldn't be so bad because I don't think the roads are too bad. So if I've got lots of cargo to shift, maybe this is one of the places that buying an eight slot trailer would be a good idea. Never used one of those before, the big trailers. Apart from moving airplane parts, but I don't think that counts. So that's two service spare parts, metal rolls, I'm gonna want to. I'm gonna need four. It's just whether or not I try to do that in this trip. I'll have to pack three and then grab one loose on top. Bit dark, isn't it? There's only fifteen here, so I've got to be a bit careful. I don't even know if rolls are needed in their own right. At the moment I'm just fixing roads and, I, and if I end up regretting how many of these I've taken from here then so be it. One more in the bed properly. 44 litres of fuel. I don't think consumption's too horrible on it, it's not wonderful. I'm assuming it's still the same formula of two rolls per metal beam crafted. Rubbish. That should pack though, shouldn't it? Right, and then I'm going to want one more on the loading bed. But I'm going to see if I can pack what's in the truck first, in the trailer first. I can't see, you can't see, nobody can see. Back her up. Come in a bit tighter. Crane one more bit, just loose on the top. Cheeky, but it'll work. Hopefully. Restore the crane. Refuel. So I'm taking all of the fuel now out of my trunk. Roof rack supplies. Now I've got just under half a tank of fuel. Get this bridge fixed. So, engine off a sec. Let's just make sure... Yeah, there's no other, there's no direct road connection unless I drive all the way around here, which I'm not going to do. So I'll just carry on doing what I've been doing, which is skip across there to get to the road. Bit dodgy, but we're in a disaster recovery situation, people. We ain't got time to be messing around with driving all the way around the road. No, no. No. Oh. I should have known that would happen. Crane. Leave that connected. Don't quite see where I normally leave the road, but up here somewhere. This is a problem with that approach, is that I want the winch right in front of me now. I can't because I'm using it to hold that roll on. 
I'm making it difficult for myself today, aren't I? I think the trader's actually stuck on something. That's the problem. But I can't see what. There we go. Got moving. Right. Engine oil. Cargo management. Service spare parts. One, two. Cut scene to finish the bridge. First major activity. Eight grand. Not bad. And then restore the crane. Unpack, repack the cargo. And I've now got the four rails properly packed. We're going to go in to the depot, which I've never driven into from this side, obviously. But there's a steel manufacturing depot. Oh, well, this isn't one that I need to bring a generator to, is it? Because if it is, then I've just wasted a little bit of effort. If I need to bring a generator here, then that's a that's this plan kiboshed. Just had that thought. And thinking about those generators, I think there's a sequence that I'll need to do things. So I'll probably, once I've got some bridges fixed, if I can get that far without generators, I'll probably switch to Black Badger Lake and work my way away from the first generating plant. Because it, it looks like you get one generator for free. I don't really want to be buying one for each place that needs it. So there's probably a sequence of drain one place of what it makes and then move the generator to another. Yeah, this is just a straightforward crafting job, isn't it? This doesn't have the symbol for requiring a generator. Um, engine art, cargo. So we're going to do left button to deposit four rolls. And then we're going to craft two metal beams from those four rolls. And then we can load those metal beams onto the loading platform and then into our truck. And then that will allow us to do South Bridge. Which also requires service spare parts. Hmm. Multiples of six, isn't it? That's what we're going to track anyway. So we'll get these metal beams loaded. Such a slow rotate on it. Especially when you think that the login rotate is certainly fast. First one. I need to be a little bit concerned about fuel. Right, that will pack. So the crane, pack the cargo. As if by magic, it packs. Should spin around in that gap. That hasn't got a great turning circle, is it? This pipe should have spun around a bit easier than that, I think, for a truck of this size. It's full steering lock. How much fuel have I got? 49. Oh, hang on a minute. What's that trail? Yeah, okay. This way. So I thought I'd taken a wrong time. What's this bridge? Uh, what's that bridge then? I haven't been over there yet. I mean, that's the way to get to this south area. 
without going over the bridge. Right, anyway, back her up a little bit. I nearly zagged when I should have zigged. So we're going to need two more service spare parts out of the railway station. But I'm pretty low on fuel as well. So I think I'll drop the trailer, shoot round to the garage, grab some fuel, come back, grab a trailer. Probably be cheeky and put a couple of service spare parts on top. I can pack one of them, carry the other one loose, and then I'll be able to do this in a single trip to the south bridge. I drop this trailer here, then go and get some fuel. Can I make it? 26 litres left, will I make it to the garage? I don't think that's a bad amount of work done for one tank of fuel. And by tank I include the roof. The so one... Yeah, the range of a vehicle includes its add-ons, doesn't it? So... 330 litres of fuel. Done a fair bit of driving and a fair bit of crane work and a little bit of laying on our side. And a little bit of driving into things as this steering lock keeps catching me out. Stop the engine, refuel. Seven hundred and seventy six left in that trailer. I haven't found the unlimited supply of metal beams yet, so I assume that's on the Black Badger Lake side. Because there's got to be one somewhere. So I am going to come in and get service spare parts while I'm here. This feels like the efficient thing to do. So service spare parts onto the loading platform, please. Just going to do this the easy way. Chuck the first one on the beams. Let auto pack, sort it out and put it on the tail of the truck. And it should be a fairly simple road drive and these don't roll as much so therefore this should stay attached not a problem I restore i might as well just restore the crane i don't think i'm going to need it but do then i'll just repack it And then I'm not familiar with the road, so I will have a quick look at this. So presumably that's a delivery location for the locomotive. It's not going to put it in my way in terms of getting past it when I've driven it there, is it? Look at the map. So the route is just follow the asphalt. Okay. Around to the right. And drive steady enough not to drop my spare cargo. As you would rope that on, right? There's no way in the real world you wouldn't just rope that extra crate on. Do you know? Cargo management. Two beams. First cutscene. 
and then unpack, repack. Struggle management, two spare parts. South bridge, awesome. This bridge will help us speed up log delivery from the wood cutting mill. So there's a logging camp down here, is there? I, from a timing perspective, need to end the episode. I just want to see if I can get my way to the watchtower in this truck. So let's just have a quick look at where that is. Detach the trailer. Leave the trailer there. I'll come and get it later. The engine off. Where is this? So follow the road around. Try and get to the watchtower. I'll take the trailer with me, actually. First of all, I don't know if I'll need it. Second of all, I'll probably, hopefully, find it easier to find a turning spot by following this trail. I'm trying to turn it around here when I get back. That put me over the $200,000 balance again. How much of money have I got now? Let me show you there. 206. That's not bad. I've been told that I'll leave this map rich. So assuming I don't buy any more trucks, I'm not going to worry about money on this map at the moment. There's the watchtower. I haven't seen much in the way of turning spaces yet, but that looks like a trail that I can get up in this. <laughs> look at that trailer, look. Thanks for that. Final watchtower of the region. Mud tested and strangest things. <laughs> I like that. Strangest things. So, cutscene. And then we'll have a look at the map. Strangest things tucked away in the corner. So the Ford can come back down here and find this stuff. That looks like a couple of buildings you can take wooden planks out of if you wanted to. Another one there. Logging station. Unlimited supply of medium logs. Then mud tested as a contest down in this corner. And yeah, very sandy map more wooden frame buildings so lots of wooden frame buildings the sawmill gives you wooden planks and and thank you very much for the comment that explained so it's a crafting zone and the reason there's two different wooden planks shown there is that you can make some out of medium logs and some out of long logs so there's two because there's two different crafting recipes at that, at that location so it looks like i can get an unlimited supply of medium logs here I why that won't select it just now but anyway it looked like an unlimited supply and then wrong turn so that's shown me uh, okay so that that other bridge would have brought me to a spit of land probably that gets this wood wrong turn truck but not much else bit of a strange thing for a big old bridge like that to just basically lead to nothing but yeah fine then more wooden planks there as well wooden framing Cool. That is pretty much scouting complete, apart from I've got to run around and pick up some of these activities that I, I haven't yet got to. So, I am going to call that good and wrap this episode here. I thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. But in the meantime, thanks and goodbye.